I want to warn people about how what is happening in Ukraine is is a stepping stone for the United States in creating this the same problem for China through Taiwan that the U.S. has created for Russia through Ukraine. It's very, very similar. In, in 2014, for example, the U.S. openly and violently overthrew the, the government in Ukraine. They had U.S. senators and State Department employees running around Kiev openly supporting the, the violent mobs that ran the elected government out of power. Now, at the same time in 2014, there was the Sunflower Movement. This was also sponsored by the U.S. government through the National Endowment for Democracy, and this paved the way for the Democratic Progressive Party in Taiwan, this uh, ultra-hardline, pro-independence, pro-U.S. party that is going to send Taiwan over the same cliff that the puppet regime in, in Kiev sent Ukraine over. Now, since 2014, the U.S., has been pouring billions and billions of dollars into both uh, Ukraine and also Taiwan, and billions in terms of weapons, billions in terms of political control, overriding the political systems in both of these areas. And they are deliberately creating a national security threat for both Russia through Ukraine and China through Taiwan. Now, the difference is, is that Ukraine was not part of Russia. Uh, Taiwan is part of China. That is that is the main difference. But other than that, there are there are many similarities. For example, the U.S. sent troops to Ukraine to train the military there and to train the Nazis who are now fighting Russia, the, the Azov battalion or regiment, whatever you want to call it. That was officially incorporated into Ukraine's armed forces, and the U.S. and its NATO allies were in Ukraine training, Azov Battalion specifically, these, these known and admitted Nazis uh, for years. And they are doing the same thing in Taiwan. It was a bit of a secret, but they did eventually admit it. So this, was a, this is Voice of America. This is State Department funded media. U.S. nearly doubled military personnel stationed in Taiwan this year. Now you have to understand that the U.S. officially recognizes the one China policy, state.gov. This joint communique from 1979 switched diplomatic recognition from Taipei to Beijing. They recognized the government of the People's Republic of China as the sole legal government of China, acknowledging the Chinese position that there is but one China and Taiwan is part of it. And you'll hear people claim that, well, the U.S. doesn't acknowledge that Taiwan is part of China. They just acknowledge that China thinks that. But even if that's the case, putting U.S. troops on Taiwan is a huge provocation. Either way, it is a deliberate provocation. And if it was the other way around, it would not be accepted. It would not be acceptable if China was doing this right off the coast of the United States. And since then, the US has been dumping billions and billions of dollars of weapons into Taiwan, just like they were doing in Ukraine. And what they are doing is deliberately crossing all of Beijing's red lines, just like they were deliberately crossing all of Russia's red lines, because they want a conflict. Uh, I, and I want to point something else out here. One of these weapons deals, this was from Reuters 2022, February last month, U.S. approves 100 million sale for Taiwan missile upgrades. So they're, they're selling a lot of different types of weapons, but also these missiles. And then I want to show you this older article from Radio Free Asia. This is also State Department funded media. 2021, U.S. Indo-Pacific Command proposes new missile capabilities to deter China. The U.S. military has advised the U.S. Congress that it needs new precision strike, air missile defense, and other capabilities to counter China in the Indo-Pacific. The assessment calls for the fielding of an integrated joint force with precision strike networks, along the so-called first island chain, referring to missile strike capabilities and integrated air missile defense in the second island chain. And they want a distributed force posture that provides the ability to preserve stability and if needed, sustain combat operations for extended periods. Remember this. And then, it, and then it refers to what is the first island chain? Land features in the Western Pacific stretching from Japan to Taiwan and through states lining the South China Sea like the Philippines and Indonesia. So the U.S. is encircling China in its immediate vicinity with missiles pointed right at China. And Taiwan is part of this wider military encirclement the U.S. is putting into place. This was 2021. 
And so when I show people this paper from 2016, Rand Corporation, War with China, and they're talking about a, a year-long military operation, conventional war with China in the Indo-Pacific region, crippling Chinese trade by, by turning the area into a war zone and deterring ships from entering the region to, to conduct trade for China. When I show people this, they say, well, that was just some pa random paper from 2016. That doesn't mean anything. This is a paper from 2016. And then that 2021 article shows you them putting into place everything necessary to implement the policy recommendations made by this, this paper. So when you see that, you see the U.S. not just pushing buttons in Taiwan over Taiwanese independence. They are creating an existential threat for China. They're talking about crippling its trade, destroying its economy, collapsing its government. That's what that 2016 paper is talking about. And then when the Pentagon is asking for a ring of missiles around China and the ability to sustain ex uh, military operations for extended periods of time, it is so that they can implement the plan detailed in the Rand Corporation paper. And the Rand Corporation paper says the window for doing this closes in 2025, but that was back in 2016. It might be closing sooner than that. Uh, the necessity of separating China from its closest and most powerful ally, Russia, is mentioned, and that is what's going on right now. So I am warning people right now that what is happening in Ukraine is going to determine what the U.S. does next regarding Taiwan, and that it is inevitable that the U.S. is going to act on Taiwan, uh, threatening China and provoking a war with China in exactly the same way the U.S. has just done to Russia through Ukraine. So I want people to remember that and keep that in mind. And I, I want to point out one, one more thing. This, everyone was talking about this, Pompeo urges U.S. to help Taiwanese prepare to defend themselves now. And he is linking Taiwan and Ukraine together. So it's not just our imagination. And he's talking about how the U.S. should recognize Taiwan's independence and how they need to start preparing Taiwan now for the same sort of situation that, that Ukraine is now in, that the U.S. put Ukraine in. And that's because they fully plan to do this to Taiwan. And what I've heard people say is that Pompeo doesn't represent the U.S. government. He's not in office right now. He doesn't hold any position in the U.S. government. What Pompeo is doing is saying out loud publicly and testing the waters uh, with things that the U.S. has been doing unofficially for years and years. Officially, they recognize the one China policy. Unofficially, they don't. They have been preparing Taiwan to declare its independence and be an, an armed, belligerent threat and to complicate China's rise on the global stage. That is what they've been doing for years. So I want people to be aware of this. This is not just Ukraine and Russia as part of encircling and containing Russia which is in turn part of encircling and containing China. And they say it right in their policy papers. And people say there's thousands of policy papers, which is true. But if you read them all, they all say the exact same thing. There is no disagreement in terms of wanting to encircle and contain Russia and China. You're not going to read a serious uh, policy paper that says, let's be friends with Russia and China. Let's respect them as equals. You will never read a policy paper, a serious policy paper in a think tank funded by these uh, corporations on Wall Street and these interests dug in in Washington. You will never read a, a paper that says that. And when you look at what the Pentagon is preparing for, they're preparing to implement the Rand Corporation paper, not some uh, fringe paper talking about friendship with Russia and China. So people need to wake up to that. This is a real threat and it's coming and pretending that it isn't isn't going to stop it from unfolding. We need to wake people up as much as possible and, uh, and warn people that if you cannot stop this from happening, please protect yourself when it does happen. Look at what's happening to Russians all around the world right now. Imagine if you're Asian, not, not Chinese. Imagine if you're just Asian People in the West are not going to be able to distinguish uh, other Asian people from Chinese people, and they're all going to be attacked. And imagine a conventional war between China and the United States in the Pacific, and imagine if China sends one or more U.S. ships to the bottom of the ocean with hundreds or even thousands of U.S. sailors on board. Imagine what's going to happen to you if you're an Asian in the United States or across Europe. Uh, when you think about what is happening to Russians right now over the situation in Ukraine. Think about it. Uh, it's 
not fear-mongering. It's just simply reality. And I don't know what the solution is, but I'm telling you that's what's going to happen. So if that's what's going to happen, ask yourself where you want to be and what you want to be doing when it happens. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share it. Think about subscribing to the channel. It's free to do it. It helps the channel grow. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be on YouTube. So please look in the video description below for other places you can find my work like on Odyssey or on Rumble. I also have a Telegram channel uh, because I have been deleted off of Twitter over this Ukraine-Russia business. It's getting very serious. This is not, uh, we're not spectators in all of this. This is increasingly going to become personal for all of us. In the video description below, I will have all of the links that I mentioned, including the Rand Corporation paper. And please don't dismiss it without reading it first. And then asking yourself, since 2016, what has the US done in terms of actual implemented policy to prepare for what the paper called for? And the answer is everything absolutely everything, including ringing China with missiles. Also in the video description below are ways you can help support my work. Uh, I have a buy me a coffee account. I prefer that. If for some reason you, you cannot make a, a one-time donation or a monthly contribution through that and you want to use something like Patreon, you can. PayPal for the time being is allowing me to continue using my account. They seem like they, they backed off whatever that policy change was for thailand so if you want to use paypal you can that is in the video description below and to everyone who is helping in other ways like sharing my work sending news tips sending kind words thank you so much i could not do this without all of that help so thank you so much and as always thank you for watching